Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 115, maybe, of the Speared Sunnies podcast. And hey, my comedy special's out. Uh, Death Threats Don't Scare Me is out. It's available to stream or download at lewspears.com slash watch. And I am fucking over the moon. <clears throat> Sorry that I missed last week's episode. I, I just literally forgot about it. The comedy special was coming out on Tuesday. I was getting ready for that. And uh, then it was Sunday. And then it was Monday. And then it was Tuesday. And my special came out. And then it was Wednesday. And I was like, oh, fuck. I never did a... I never did a podcast on Sunday, and then I was like, well, if I record it now, I won't have anything to talk about next week, so fuck it. <laughs> uh, so sorry I missed it, but uh, I just, I literally just completely forgot about it with um, all the comedy special stuff. So, hey, uh, I'm fucking, I, I'm feeling amazing, man. Uh, the, the reception to the special has been just phenomenal, dude. Like, it's that, it's that rare moment. It's that really, like, inf infinitely rare moment in a creator's life where, where my thoughts on how good it was completely lined up with the people watching. And my thoughts were, this is fucking amazing and it's the best thing that I've ever made and ever done in my life. And that is exactly what everyone has been saying who's watched it because so often man so often I'll be like oh this this is good and then it tanks <laughs> or the opposite is true more more commonly I'm like ah this one's okay I guess and it fucking blows up um but so so hardly ever am I firstly hardly ever am I like oh this is Amazing. I hardly ever think that. And then to, for, to have me think this is amazing and to have you guys also go this is amazing never happens. Because so, so many times I'm like, oh, this is fucking amazing. Like my good example of this is the, the porn star lookalike video. I was like, this video is fucking amazing. And everyone else was like, oh, yeah, it's pretty good, man. You found a guy who looks like you. <laughs> but but the special so I'm so happy with, with the reception to it um, and everybody downloading and all these people oh, it, you know what it is it's exactly what I set out to do I created something really fucking good for you guys and it wasn't censored by any media organization or funded by this or funded by that it was funded by you guys for you guys and now fucking dude 300 people from Norway have downloaded it. That's insane, bro. Fucking Norway. I will probably not... Unless I become insanely famous, I'm not going to Norway ever. But cunts in Norway can, can watch my stand-up. That's crazy, man. So thank you very much uh, if you've got it uh, and for all the positive feedback. And if you're about to get it, thank you very much. If you haven't got it, dude, if you like anything that I do, this special blows that shit out of the water. You'll fucking love it. It's only $5. If you're listening to this, don't give me that I can't afford it shit. You can. All right? It's $5. If you don't have $5, sell your phone. <laughs> if you've got a fucking smartphone or a computer and you're watching this on YouTube or listening to it on through your headphones, you can afford this special, alright? Don't give me any of that shit. If you're not getting it, be honest, be a fucking man and tell me that you just, you just don't want it. That's, okay, I don't want to hear none of this I can't afford it shit because that's a cop out and you know it. Tell me like a man, tell me that you don't want it. And that's fine. That's fine if you don't want it. But don't come at me with that, oh, I don't have $5, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Dude, you know what? You know what, my, you know what I'm going to do? Start doing it, cunts? I love doing this to people. I fucking love it. Because, hey, I appreciate, I appreciate everyone who likes my shit. But it's, it's, the, it's the cunts. It's the cunts who lie. Because I know. I know. Alright? So here's my thing. I've talked about this before. People, 
I love fucking with people who are, who are just who are just lying, right? So often when you're a comedian and you have an online thing, people will be like, "Hey man, I wish I could make it to a show, but I just can't." And they're lying. They were never going to go to a show. They just want to talk to you. So they try and they try and fucking clickbait you. They try and catfish you, right? With a potential ticket. Not a ticket sale, but everyone who does live shows, the people who show up in real life, the, those are the A1s. Those are the fucking real people who really like you. So you're always really nice to them because those are the guys who pay the fucking bills. Do you know what I mean? I love the people who come to shows. But I hate the people who try and trick me into thinking they're coming to the show just so they can talk to me. Do you understand the difference? There's a difference. And they exist. So often, these cunts will be like, Hey man, uh, really bummed I didn't get to, I, I can't make it to your show, I'm busy. And when I was doing like 12 shows in a row in Melbourne, I would get this all the time. I would get a message, because I'm Snapchatting, I'm like, Hey man, I got, a, I got a show tonight, you guys should come. And then I'll get a message from like, <coughs> from a couple of people and they'll and and they'll always say hey man I'm really bummed I can't make it to the show sucks man I wish I could be there but good luck and then I'll go <laughs> and I can tell when they're lying they're not they don't they can't not make it they've chosen not to come but they're lying so I go hey man don't worry I still have 11 shows left and then they go, fuck. Because they're not busy. No one's busy for 11 nights in a row. No one. <laughs> and then, <laughs> so, I, do, I love that shit. I love trapping those cunts. Where they go, oh man, I wish I could make it tonight. Thinking that you're done. They don't know how many dates you have. So they go, oh man, I'm so bummed I missed out, bro. I'm so bummed I wish I came. And they're lying. So you go, don't worry, man. I'm doing 11 more shows. And then they go, cool, man. I'll have to, I'll have to check and see if I can go. And it's like, they were never going to go. They just wanted to talk to you. They just wanted to catfish you into thinking you're, they're the type of person to see a show when really they're just bullshitting. It's like going into a shop and then spending 20 minutes with the fucking salesperson looking at a vase that you never wanted to buy. You're just wasting their time. Because you wanted to look at the vase and, and feel like you're the type of person who does that kind of shit. Buys vases. But then you just leave. So now, right, I can double trap cunts. Next time someone hits me up and they go, Man, I'm so bummed I missed your show. I'm going to go... Hey man, there's 11 more. And then they'll go, oh dude. They'll lie again. Sometimes they get, oh man, I wish I could, but you know, <laughs> I work every weeknight and weekend night at exactly 7.30pm and then I finish at 8.30pm so I can't make it. But then, that's the second lie and then I'm going to fucking check made them now. Now that I got this special, I'm going to be like, hey man, no worries. You can watch my comedy special. <laughs> it's only five bucks. And if that cunt goes, oh. Because then there's no excuse. There's nothing. It's like you can watch it at any time. It's not expensive. And it's easy to do. And you can do it on your phone right now. So if I get anything less than... Ah, you got me, man. I was just like, I never have any intention of ever seeing your stand-up comedy. I just wanted to talk to you. Because I'm a fucking clout demon. If I get anything less than that, I'm just going to go, fuck you, man. You're just wasting my time. <laughs> and that's not to shit on people who genuinely can't afford shit. I, like, I, I, don't, I got no beef with you, you guys, but it's the, it's the fucking, it's the time wasters. That, I don't know. I don't know what they're trying to get out of it. Just trying to talk to me or trying to seem like they're more of a fan than they are. I don't know. That shit pisses me off. And it happens to every fucking comic. Happens to Luke. It's me and Luke always trap people whenever, whenever we're doing shows. I love doing that shit. 
Just trying to force people to admit that they were never going to come. <laughs> but um, hey, man, uh, I really, I really appreciate like the real people who are who are getting special and who are letting me know. You know what the coolest thing is? Is is people um, organizing other friends to watch it together. That's so cool, dude. I don't know. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop. I don't want to talk about the fucking special for for an hour, um, because you know. Heaps, heaps of people probably listen to this have probably already seen it. If you haven't, go and get it. It's on my website. It's five bucks and it's, you know, it's fucking awesome. So I don't know what to tell you. If you're not going to get it and you like, if you like my stuff and you're not going to get it, you're just missing out. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. You're just missing out on something good. So, you know, shoot yourself in the foot, man. At least you're, at least you're saving five bucks that you can spend on a fucking Coke and a Sam. Like, there's nothing better that you get for five bucks. Unless you, unless you, unless you, like, fuck sandwiches, man. Unless you've got, like, a sandwich fetish and you just, there's there's nothing you love better than sticking a dick in, like, a ham and cheese sandwich. Then, fuck, go for it, man. (laughs) But if you don't want to fuck a sandwich, like, get my special instead. Man, you know what I, you know what I read? This is a thing that, that I want, that I, that we wanted to talk about on radio, but we just can't. Because you know, it, it, we wouldn't be able to control ourselves from just steer. Because sometimes we're pretty good, man. Me and Luke is, is, is when we're, we're talking about a topic that could go into a fuck direction if we weren't on air. We're pretty good at staying on course, but every now and then we just we just can't trust ourselves, so we don't talk about it at all. And and that's the kind of stuff that makes it here. <laughs> um. <coughs> oh, sorry, I'm a bit sick. Man, Splendor, the music festival. If you're outside of Australia, Splendor is one of the busy, biggest music festivals we have in uh, in Australia. It's like our Coachella, so it's fucking shit. So Splendor, this music festival, has this thing where what they're doing is they have a special VIP area at Splendor, but the only way you can get into that area is if you let them test you for an STI. Now, that's confusing on so many fucking levels because, one, all right, do you you want to be in that VIP area? I don't think you do because, (laughs) because you can't get the results instantly. There's no STI test that where you get the results straight away. So... You're in, it's not like you, you do the test and then you get let in to a special VIP area where definitely no one has AIDS. It's not like that. You're just in an area with people who have been tested, which means every single person in that VIP area thinks they have something, (laughs) but they're not sure. So everyone in there is like, oh, why does my pussy smell all the time? I'm, I maybe I have something. Oh, you know, I'll get tested at Splendor for free, and I can go into the VIP area. Or there's some dude with like, oh man, what's this rash on my cock? I know, I'll go to the VIP Splendor area, and then all of those people who think they might have something are just hanging out. So if there's anyone in there who definitely doesn't have something, they're gonna fucking get it because they're surrounded. By hundreds of people who are getting tested, probably because they think they've got something. That's not a VIP area, man. That's a fucking AID area. AIDS. That's how you get that shit. World's most exclusive club. The fucking Splendor AIDS tent. (laughs) Put that on the poster. Fuck Post Malone. I want to be in the syphilis tent. And here's another thing. What the fuck? What are they going to do with that information, man? Like, do you have... You you have to do the swab or whatever the fuck they do. And then are they mailing you the results after the festival? Or what are they doing with your DNA? You don't give away your fucking DNA for free. Don't. And you know what? (laughs) Don't do it at all. If it's not a doctor... Here's the thing, man. You can't give your fucking DNA to a business. 
And here's one. I just read this shit. You know all those DNA, Ancestry.com, and all that FamilyTree.com, all that kind of horse shit, all right? You know, once they get your little mouth swab and you send it to them, sure, you get to find out that you're fucking 3.1% black and go, hey, I'm an African-American, I can say the N-word now. Yeah, yeah for sure, whatever, they'll give you that. But, but, you know they don't just throw your results in the bin. There's this business out there that has millions and millions and millions of people's DNA. What do you think they're going to do with it? Do you reckon they're going to, oh, we should dispose of this information responsibly? No, they're going to sell it. They're going to sell it to pharmaceutical companies. And I, and you know what? When I said that shit, even I thought, hey, um, this is some fucking InfoWars conspiracy level shit. This is crazy. But you know what I read? And I'm going to bring it up right now. That is exactly what they fucking done. DNA tests sold. Where are we? Fucking. Oh my god. I should have googled this beforehand. Uh... Ah, there we go. So this big company, oh my god, I'm gonna fucking... Where is it? Ah, here we go. NBC News. This is the worst podcast on planet Earth. NBC News. Home DNA test results from 5 million customers will now be used by drug giant GlaxoSmithKline to design new drugs. <laughs> As, do you reckon that's all they're doing with it? No. All of those fucking companies are buying that DNA selling the information to other companies. Next thing you know, you found out that you're 3.4% black, but some other company has created a 99.9% .9 clone of you that's going to come and murder you in your sleep. It's going to chip in its brain. And one day, all of these clones are going to activate and take over the world. That's what's next, man. And then all of us... And then, and then one day, in like fucking... 25 years time when cloning is perfected and mind control chips are the norm Australia uh, America is going to be renamed from America to uh, GlaxoSmithKline world and whoever GlaxoSmithKline is is just going to run the fucking planet it's going to be self-driving cars running over informants no they won't even they won't even be they won't even have fucking self-driving cars anymore They'll be, they'll be have, they'll have like Glaxo Smith Klein mobiles, and it'll just be driven by like exact clones of all these other people who mysteriously disappeared. Where'd they go? I don't know. Hey man, why did five million people just get jobs at Glaxo Smith Klein, where they're working voluntarily for free? Gee, I don't know, man. Isn't it weird that everyone who signed up to Ancestry.com just completely changed overnight? It's almost like they were replaced with fucking clones. That's what's going to happen, man. You know, one day you're at Splendor getting an STI check because you got a weird rash on your nutsack. The next morning you wake up and an exact replica of you is choking you to death. Glaxo Smith Klein has commanded that you must die. I am the true whatever the fuck you know that's what's happening man and it's our fault because everyone's like oh i want to find out where my ancestors are from ask your grandma do you do you really like do you really want to know who cares i was with someone and they were uh, they were like hey man what's your ancestry i was like i don't know what and they're like oh don't you want to know i'm like no i don't give a fuck I'm me, my dad's my dad, and my grandma's my grandma, and beyond that, I don't know, bunch of strangers. Like, what am I gonna, what am I actually gonna get out of it, other than losing like two hundred and fifty dollars and the rights to my DNA? Huh? Nothing. Fucking nothing. I except the the only thing that'll happen is in thirty years. When they figured out genetic engineering, there'll be a, there'll be a bunch of seven foot superhuman spear soldiers walking around just choking people out. 
Glaxo Smith Klein Incorporated will rule the world. That's what's going to happen. I'm sorry, not giving my DNA to anyone. Except for the ladies, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, man. Bro. Could you imagine a phone call at Splendor? Dude, where are you? Where are you, man? Bro. Bro, I'm in, I'm in the Splendor STI test tent. The what? The Splendor STI test tent. Oh, where's that? Oh, it's next to like where they sell bottles of water for like $7. Oh, yeah, there. All right, I'll be there. How do I get in the tent? Oh, you've, you've got to come into a cup. You've got to what? You've got to come into a cup. I've got to, I've got to come near, I've got to come to the cup? No, 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 to get in the tent. Yeah, the, the tent's near the cups of water, the cups of $7 water. No, that's not what I'm saying, man. I'm saying, if you want to get in the tent, you have to put semen inside a cup and give it to them for free. Well, what are they going to do with it? I don't know. It's this GlaxoSmithKline business. They seem trustworthy. All right, man. All right, I'll be there in a second. Just, I'm just load. I'm just trying to load up Pornhub so I can get in the tent. I, I don't know, man. What do you mean? You you can't wank without porn? No, I can't, man. I don't know what it is. I just can't do it. Porn's ruined me, man. I've got no imagination anymore. All right, dude. Well, well, good luck. I'll see you in a minute. There's this girl. There's this girl next to me with a really smelly vagina. I'm gonna try and talk to her. All right, dude. Man, the Wi-Fi sucks here. <laughs> I can't load up my fucked up gangbangs. This is why this is why I have to record the podcast at night, man. Because I've been here all day and all of the warehouses around me have had people working in them and I just can't be screaming that shit. <laughs> I just can't be screaming that shit in the day. Oh man. Dude, if you knew I'm saving it for the stage for for this tour, but it's, it's taking me everything, some, dude, some shit has happened here, and I, I, I'm not going to put it online, because I don't want it out there, but I'm going to talk about it in this year's tour, some shit has happened at the warehouse, and, and, <laughs> fucking, man, I'm, I, I don't know, I don't even know why, I don't even know why I brought, you know why I brought it up, because I can't stop thinking about it every time I do a podcast, of, I want to tell, but I'm not going to tell you, I'm saving it for the fucking tour. But, but dude, best believe when you see this year's show, you're going to fucking lose your mind. Anyway, where are we? Um, oh, and uh, thanks to everyone who came out to the movie premieres. That was, that was real fun. Um, it was really cool to, to, um, to watch people watch the special. Because that's, you know, that's like, I, I learned so much about myself as a performer, man. Because, you know, when I'm doing, when you're on stage and in the moment, you're in it. So, you know, you, you're doing the jokes and you're reacting to the audience. But I, but me just sitting there, in, in surrounded by like 200 people just watching me. And I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. I was paying attention to what people watching me watch me were doing. So I learned so much about myself as a performer. I saw like all of my bad habits... I saw immediately what I was doing that I could do better. And I saw so many ways to improve how I write material just from watching people watch me. And it was like, it was really fucking beneficial. And, and obviously, you know, people loved it. But I was like, I was watching it going, man, I had no idea that I did that. Or I had no idea that me doing that made the audience do this. There was so much shit. It was really fascinating, man. And I feel like I'm going to take all, all of that that I've learned and just try and, you know, I'm always trying to improve and get better at my fucking material. So, and I feel like I learned so much just from watching three shows of mine. And obviously it was the same show, but I like, I watched it three times and I was like, oh, every single time I do that, the audience does this. It was really interesting, but I don't, I don't want to get too far fucking into like stand up comedy and lingo and all that kind of shit. Oh, and a fucking big, a massive fuck you to the person who came to Melbourne and then gave me a pair. <laughs> fuck you, man. 
It's like, it's like, dude, I'm trying to celebrate for, for one minute. I'm trying to have a moment where I can be proud of myself and the fucking huge thing that I've accomplished, that I've been working on for four years, I finally did it, and one of you cunts shows up with a fucking pair to remind me about my shitty website URL. <laughs> Loosepairs.com. Hey man, where are the pairs? I'm waiting on my pair delivery. <laughs> and you know what the worst thing was? I took a bite and it wasn't even ripe. So, you're a dog. Bringing me, first of all, bringing a pair to my show. You, you, you suck. Fuck you. But secondly, bringing one that's not even ripe. You double suck. Sorry to tell you, man, but that... <laughs> you guys suck. <laughs> man, I, I, I... You know what I did? When, when, when I left... I planned everything. I'm getting, I'm getting so good at airports. I'm getting so good at airports that whenever I bring an airport novice with me... I, I, I feel like I'm... You know, when you, you know when you go to the movie cinemas at like 12pm on a Wednesday or a weekday? If you go at like between 12 and 2pm on a weekday and you see that one amazingly selfless dude who takes all of the mentally handicapped people to the movies at once and there's like seven of them and that poor fucking saint is running around trying to make sure everyone's safe and having a good time and not cracking it and you see that person and 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 they see you and both of you have this moment where where you're like I'm nowhere near that much of a good person as you you're a fucking hero but I, but I will, I, I don't want to be you. <laughs> and, and the guy is like, I am so much better than you. And I can't help myself. I, I have to do this because I was born a fucking saint. But I wish I was you. And I wish I couldn't, I didn't give a fuck. I wish I was a bad person. And you have that little moment where both of you acknowledge... That one person is better than the other person, but neither of you want to be that person. <laughs> I feel like that handler when when I go to the airport now. I took my uh, my camera guy, Tripod Todd, who works on the radio show with me, and he he you know what he was good at he was good at packing the night before and being ready. But once we got to the airport, it like he just made so many rookie errors. First of all, he used the toilet closest to where everyone lines up for the plane. Bad mistake. That's where everyone uses a toilet. That's when you're going to end up fucking brushing elbows with two other dudes while you're trying to piss. Never do that. You take, you, you walk an extra 50 meters and take the second closest toilet. And women, you walk 300 meters with... To like the furthest away toilet because that's how you skip a line. I always feel so sorry for, for women that just have to line up to use the fucking bathroom. I don't know why. You know what it is? It's because it's hey, hey ladies, if you wanna if you wanna fix the toilet situation, some of you guys are gonna have to become builders because we have no idea what it's like to piss as a woman. We're just like, hey, uh men get three toilets, women get three toilets. That should be fine. We don't know that it takes you guys fucking 35 minutes to piss. Dude, you know what, I, you know what, you know what blew my mind when I found this out? I can't remember if I've, if I've talked... I found this out ages ago. It's not like I just worked it out yesterday. But I had no idea, man, that fucking women, when they piss, have to use toilet paper to, to like, to, like, uh, to, what would you call it? To fucking, uh, to... They they gotta use toilet paper like they just did a shit, but on their on their pussy to to get the piss. I had no idea. That blew my mind, and I was like, man, I'm so happy that I that I'll I will never have to do that. I mean, maybe when I get eighty, when when I'm like eighty years old, I might have to fucking wear a wear a diaper because I can't stop myself from pissing. 
sure. But, I, but I, like, dude, a pussy napkin? I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea. And you know what? That's why there's, there's such a big line for the women's. Because there's so much shit like that that men don't know. Because why would we know? So, you know what, ladies? If you want more toilets, some of you guys are going to have to give up on the teaching thing and, and become builders. Build your own fucking... Someone... There needs to be someone in a room... Going, hey, uh, it, it takes me like twice as long as you to piss, so I need twice as many toilets. That makes sense, right? And then a, a dude will be like, oh, does it? Didn't know that. Sorry. Yeah, twice as many toilets. Problem solved. Anyway, if you're a woman, don't you don't piss at the closest toilet or the second closest. You walk almost to the entrance of the airport. There's never a line. You're welcome, ladies. I just saved you so much time and embarrassment having to line up at the airport to take a piss. What else did he do? Oh yeah, he stood up. He stood up when they said, Oh, the plane is now boarding. Never stand up when they say the plane is boarding. Because you know what that means? That means you're just going to be standing up for fucking 20 minutes in a line. Never do that shit. I've never understood people who do that shit. I don't get on the plane until I hear that final boarding call. Sometimes I don't get on that plane until I hear Lewis Spears, this is your final call. We are waiting for you. Sometimes I wait for that. And you know what? It doesn't make the plane late. So don't come at me with that selfish bullshit. Nuh-uh. I'm just waiting for my personal <laughs> Mr. Spears. You can board now. No, I don't do that very much. But I, but, but I do wait for the final boarding call. I sit down in the area where everyone lines up and I just wait until there's like three people left in line. Because if you line up to get... Sorry, it cut out. I don't know what's going on. Because... It... What was I talking about? Oh yeah, the lines, man. Alright. I can't, I can't believe this shit, but I had a fucking argument with a friend about this. Okay? Because here's the thing, man. If you... Let me ask you a question. If you... Get on the plane first. How much time do you save? Zero. And I had a fucking argument. A, a huge argument with a friend. Because she spends... She thinks she saves time if she gets on first. No, you don't. The plane takes off when the plane takes off. And this is what I was telling her. And she didn't get that she wasn't saving any time by getting on the plane first. And she believes this to the point, and I'm no word of a lie, where she pays extra money when she books the flight to get priority boarding. So she pays an extra $30 every flight so that she can get in the priority line. Which, by the way, is still a fucking line. They call it the queue skip. No, it's not. You pay extra money to get into a smaller queue with all the other fucking idiots who paid money to get into a queue. And even if you are first in line at the queue skip line, how much time do you save? I, I was asking her this. I was like, how much time have you saved? And she would go, well, I've saved 20 minutes because normally it takes... 20 minutes to line up whereas I get I pay $30 so I've saved and I get on first I've saved 20 minutes and I would go okay if you get on the plane 20 minutes early does the plane take off 20 minutes early and she would go no it takes off at the same time. I say, so you've saved no time. She goes, no, no, no. I've saved 20 minutes of lining up. I said, no. You're just waiting in a different area. You're waiting on the plane now. Which is an objectively worse place to wait. Because you're on the fucking plane where you can't move. As opposed to the airport lobby where you can walk around, do cartwheels, buy a drink, stretch out, charge your laptop. And she... She didn't get it. She kept going, no, no, no. I've saved 20 minutes. So I'd be like, okay, so let's say the plane takes off at 1 p.m. 
And she's like, yeah. I'm like, that means they board at 12.20. And she'd be like, yeah. I'd say, so if you get on the plane at 12.20, yeah. And I get on the plane at 12.40, yeah. And the plane leaves at 1 p.m., yeah. When do you... And the plane... So the plane leaves at 1 p.m. Yeah? She's like, yeah. And let's say the plane lands at 2 p.m. She's like, yeah. I'm like, when does my plane land? And she goes, 2 p.m. I'm like, okay. And when does your plane land? She's like, it's the same plane. So we land at 2 p.m. So you've saved no time. And she's like, no, no, I've saved 20 minutes. I'm like, you haven't saved any time. <laughs> I can, do. I, I swear, man, I could, I could have that argument forever. Forever. And she wouldn't get it. She would still be like, no, 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 I've saved time. You haven't saved time. You're waiting in a different area. And you've spent 30 extra dollars to do that. If you really want to think about it, I've saved money by not doing that, and you've wasted it. And she wouldn't, I don't know, I could have this, like I said, man, I could talk about this all day. But I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting to the point where I'm like an airport pro now. What else did my, what else did my camera guy do? Oh, dude, he made the biggest... The biggest mistake. First of all, he didn't get, when you go through customs, you take your laptop out of your bag, put it in a tub, bag goes on another tub, it goes through. He kept fucking it up. I reckon he got pulled up by customs four times. But whatever, he's an airport newbie. But the worst mistake he made, and this, I feel like, even if it's your first time in an airport, you should know. And if you do this, it's your own fault. Do you know what he did when we got to Brisbane? No, it was, it was Brisbane Airport. One of the worst airports. He goes to an airport cafe and what does he get? A chicken burger. Are you insane, man? I've seen people doing like eight backflips on a motorbike a hundred stories in the air and I still think that is less risky than getting a chicken burger at an airport in Brisbane. I, to I told him, I, I fucking told him, I was like, hey man, at the airport, just about the only safe thing to eat is the yogurt and the muesli. For some reason, you can eat that everywhere at any place, they never fuck it up. The coffee is fine, the yogurt and the muesli is fine, I would, I would really not trust anything else. For some reason, they're good with dairy. I don't know why. So if you get a cheese sandwich, safe. If you get uh, a coffee... Yogurt and something, safe. But if you get anything, anything with meat in it, you're fucked. Unless you get it from McDonald's or one of the fast food things. And you don't want to do that at an airport anyway. So don't do that. But if you have to get something with meat in it, it's Macca's. None of the fucking caf, none of that. Because you're going to spend $15 for... Uh, Food poisoning. That's what you're buying. You're spending 15 bucks on a meal that looks good so you can fucking die. <laughs> That's it. So he gets the fucking chicken burger. And I'm like, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? And he's like, oh, it looked good. You told me this place was good. I said, yeah, this place is good for the yogurt and nothing else, man. He was like, I don't know, it looks fine. I'm like, that's the trick. They all look fine. They all look fine. You spend $14 on it and then you die. So he eats the thing. And what happens? What do you, what ha he gets, I've never seen a man so sick. And props to him because he did a, he still pushed through and he filmed all the thing and he put that little premiere vlog up. But I have never in my life seen a man look more sick. Dude. Have you ever seen someone so sick that their hairstyle changes? <laughs> because that's what happened. His hair is normally up and bouncy. It went down over his face like he was in fucking Green Day in 2003. 
I woke up one morning and he was just going, I walk a lonely road. <laughs> it was so sick, man. He was so sick that somehow that chicken burger made him like fucking sick and then he got the flu and then he gave it to me and now I'm sick. Fucking airport rookies, man. And I'm going to have to do it all over again when I go on tour because I'm bringing more people with me and they're all fucking rookies. I'm really turning into that guy from the fucking cinema. With the halo around his head and the depression in his soul because he can't help but be such a good person. But he's still like, I hate this, why am I doing it? I have to, I have to look after people. Those people are saints. My mum taught me that. I remember I was like, like eight or nine. And it was school holidays, so we were at the cinema at like 12pm or whatever on a weekday. And there was this poor dude running around holding like three different things of popcorn and six drinks trying to round up all of these people that were running around, pushing each other. You know, mentally impaired people. And my, and my mum made me stop and she goes, look at that guy. And I was like, why mum? That's a bit rude to point. She's like, no, no, not to make fun. That guy is a really good person and you always smile at those people because they're doing a really good thing and hardly anyone does that. And I looked at him and, even, and my little nine-year-old soul was like, even then when I was nine and I was innocent and untouched by the world, even I looked at that guy and I was like, I'm nine and I already know that you're a better person than me because I would never do that. So shout out to whatever that job is. You guys are fucking saints. All right, with that... It's time to get into the worst part of the podcast, shall we? I think so. Um, Alright, miscellaneous bit at the end is the part at the end of the podcast where I answer questions from you guys. If you want to send in a question or you need some life advice or if you, or if you have a funny story, uh, podcast at lewspears.com. Uh, that's the email, it's podcast at lewspears.com. Don't send me a f your fucking life story. Keep it like three paragraphs is enough, man. I'm not going to read more than that. All right? I read enough fucking science fiction shit all day with fantastic stories in it. I don't need to read yours. Three paragraphs, sum it up in the header. Subject line. What? Oh, I got fucking heaps. Oh, shit. I haven't looked at this for ages. Every time I don't miss a podcast, I got so many. Um. Uh. Oh, here's a good one. Oh, I'll, you know what? I, I haven't read this one. I already know I'm going to love it. You blocked me on Twitter. Regret mail. <laughs> and hey, I, here's the thing. I, I never get offended. But I always block people. And I, I, I block people for shit. So on, I block people for shit behavior, man. It's not even like, if someone says something mean to me, I generally don't block them. I would rather just like retweet them and roast them back and have everyone make fun of them. I love that shit. But if someone says me some, it's not that, it's not the hate that makes me angry. It's the fucking dumb cunts that make me so, like the people who don't get it. Perfect example. Oh man, this is going to ruin my day reading this one again. I put up my heckler clip from the comedy special. I got heckled, and there was, ooh, there was this comment of, of this dude that didn't, no, it was the trailer, yeah, it was the trailer of this dude that didn't fucking get it, where are we, I'm trying to bring it up now, so, Ah, I can't remember. I don't even need to read it out. I've, it's, it, it made me so mad that it burned the words into my brain. So I put up the trailer to my comedy special. And there's this, this comment that goes... <laughs> oh, it made me so mad. This big fucking comment calling me a scam artist. The dude goes, Hey man, you crowdfunded this comedy special and now you're selling it for five dollars? What about all the people who gave you money? Sounds like you're scamming your fans. You're a sellout, bro. Oh man, that made me... Because you know what? 
that dude is just wrong. That guy's just an idiot. Like, there's nothing I can do about that. He's just fucking stupid. Like, if someone, if someone thinks I'm not funny, fair enough. That's fair. I can't, everyone has different tastes. I'm not the best comedian in the world. And the best comedian in the world would still have cunts that don't like him because, hey, it's subjective. So that's fine. Don't think I'm funny. You can tell me. I don't care. I'm a duck. You're the water. Off my back. I don't give... But it's the, it's the fucking... It's the dumb cunts that set me off because they just don't understand. So this guy... That comment is wrong on so many levels. So this guy obviously assumed because I crowdfunded something and other people... Other people contributed to make this thing happen. So he just sat back and he was like, oh, other people will do this for me and then I'll just benefit from it for nothing. So that's the first thing that he assumed. He thought that because other people did shit, he would benefit. Then, he's like, Oh, you're selling it for $5, which means everyone who contributed money didn't get the comedy special. Which is not true. Everyone who donated got the comedy special. That's how it worked. So it, that's fucking stupid. So he thinks, Oh, all these people who gave him money got nothing in return. What a sellout scam artist. Retarded. Third, he's like, oh, you're selling it for $5. Which means, one, he thinks that I tricked you guys into funding the special. So for some reason, he thinks that I was like, hey, if you guys give me money, I will give you a special for free. The, just about the first thing that I say in the pitch video for the crowdfund is Hello, I would like to create a special which will be a $5 download That's what the video was So this dude has forgotten that it was set up from the very beginning to be a $5 download He thinks I haven't sent any of the... He just assumed all of this shit And all of that assumption revolves around him thinking he was going to get it for doing nothing. Just that, the absolute epitome of entitled retard. Though that's what fucking triggers me, is the entitled retard. Oh man, that made me mad. So I wrote this big fucking comment, and then he, I, I don't know. And then I was like, I, I, and then I just deleted. I was like, fuck him, fuck him. Not worth my time, he's retarded. Fuck it. Let that caretaker take him to the movies because I'm not a good enough person to deal with this cunt. <laughs> Enjoy Skyscraper. Alright, so, with that being said, with my little fucking rant out of the way, I had to do that, I'm sorry, but it made me so mad. Let's get on to this. You blocked me on Twitter, regret mail. And this is not the same dude. Uh, I just want you to know that I sent you a tweet as soon as you announced your stand-up special saying it's shit, mate. I never believed that. The worst part about my tweet was the smiley face after it. And I felt like shit as soon as it was sent. Straight after, I was blocked and I still am. <laughs> it's like, dude, of course I'm gonna fucking block that. It's, it's not even legitimate criticism. I do a thing, someone goes, it's shit. I'm like, alright, he thinks I'm shit. He, well, he can never see my shit again. That'll benefit... Of course I was going to block you, dude. And also, that's not funny. I get this shit all the time. Some people... Man, I don't know what it is. About whatever. My content, I criticize shit. Obviously, I'm a comedian, and my comedy is generally making fun of other people's stuff. But... A lot of the time, for some reason, people think that means if if they insult me, like I'll, I'll find it funny. Like so often, it happens every show where I'm meeting everyone who comes to the show, and I'm like, "Hey, man, thanks for coming. What did you think of the show?" And most of the time, people are like, "Oh, it was great. I loved it. This joke was funny. Hey, it's good to meet. All that kind of shit. What nice shit." But there's always, always at least I reckon at least. 10 people every show I go hey man thanks for coming what did you think and they go oh, I was shit and they're, they're joking 
but I just get cut <laughs> because because I think they're serious and I go oh and they go oh no no it's I I I liked it and it's just it's just awkward. I've never been like ah yeah I don't know what I don't know what they think is gonna happen like that like I, I go hey man. What did you think of, thanks for coming, what did you think of the show? It's shit. And then I go, ah, you bloody rascal. And I put him in a headlock and give him a noogie. Ah, you bloody got me. Ah, right, good one, mate. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they, what they think I'm supposed, how I'm supposed to respond to that. But it's never, ah, good joke, mate. Because it's not. I don't know. Um, uh, it's been probably a year now. And I never understood completely why until you said this stand-up special was perfect. I don't think I've ever felt that about anything. It also resonated with me in your latest podcast when you said uh, it's better to be the guy that forgets shit. I wish I was that person. I don't, rem I don't, rem I don't know when I said that or what. I can't remember what I was talking. It's better to be the guy that forgets shit. I don't know what. I don't know what that was about. If you take anything away from this poorly reg worded regret mail, I want you to know I'm genuinely sorry, dude. Uh, oh, hey, man. Thank you. I appreciate that, bro. You should... Uh, oh, he didn't link me his Twitter. Uh, if you link me your Twitter, man, I'll, uh, I'll unblock you. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. And yeah, you know, you know what it is? Obviously, this dude was being sarcastic or joking, but I can't tell that. It just says, I put up a thing about my crowdfund. The first comment is, this sucks, it's shit. And often, when you post something online, the first comment often dictates what happens after. So if the first comment is, you suck, this is shit, and, and clearly without having watched the video, I just delete that shit. Because I'm like, oh, this is useless. And it's just going to make other people do the same thing. And then all of a sudden the comment section sucks. So if you email me your Twitter, man, I'll unblock you. Uh, where are we? Oh man, I'm so fucking hungry. Dude, I've been doing the podcast for too long. Guys, sorry. I mean, you're welcome. The miscellaneous bit at the end is going to go for... Um, uh, it's going to be a short one. You guys are welcome. Sorry, I didn't realize what time it was. It's fucking Saturday night. I need to go home. It's like 9 p.m. on Saturday night. I need to go home and have dinner. Hey, guys. Thank you very much for, for listening to this. Um, and thank you so much. I feel like I didn't do that enough in the special. Thank you in, uh, in this podcast. Thank you so much for uh, watching the special, uh, downloading it, streaming it. If you want to get it, if you enjoy this podcast even a little bit, I can guarantee you the comedy special is better than any any video I've ever done. It's better than any stand-up show you've seen me do live. It's better than this podcast. It's better than any episode I've ever done. It's the best thing I've ever fucking done in my life. And I'm, I'm happy to now tell you, now that people have seen it, everyone agrees that it's the, that it's the best thing I've ever done. And so many people have been hitting me up with so much positive feedback, and I really appreciate that. It's, it makes my day. It makes me real. It makes me go. You know what? All of all of the shit I put myself through to get this thing out independently without any help from people who knew what they were doing, it means it was worth it. So, please do yourself a favor. If you like what I do, you will fucking love my comedy special. It's only five bucks. And it's on my website, loosebeers.com slash watch. Go and get that shit. You won't regret it. Uh, and, and please do let me know what you think because I, 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 you know, I've been working on this shit for a really long time and I would love to know what you guys think. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, thanks for getting the special. It's on my website, loosebeers.com slash watch. Go and get that shit. Um, now, go and do it. See you later. Uh, I'll talk to you next week. Have a shit one.